<laughs> I guess we are, uh, we are rocking. What's up, everybody? Jernai Gaming, what up, dude? Wow. Real quick, hopefully anyway, real quick stream here, guys. I got about, well, technically I got an hour, but hopefully we get this done within a half an hour. I had to talk a little AEW and NXT, man, while I got some time. <laughs> I had to. AEW coming off their... One of their biggest main events in their show's history. Their short history. Just over a year, man. And this was the main event. Talk of the town, bro. Two females getting color like that. Two females going to war like that. Doing some Mick Foley, Terry Funk type shit. This was the time. We already know. BC told you when they did the Shaq bullshit. They, they got some eyeballs for that night. 930 plus thousand. Still didn't crack a million. But they did pretty damn good. But I told you guys, somebody like Shaq is not going to keep those eyeballs. Very next week, there goes nearly 200,000 viewers. But this is different. They had a mediocre show last week, right? It was okay at best. But that main event, that made people talk. That gets people thinking, maybe I have to tune in, right? But you have to do that consistently, obviously. So this week comes around. This week comes around, and I'm thinking, oh, they better be rolling on that momentum, brah. They better be rolling on momentum. Tony Khan has to be on his A game. Cody, Omega, everybody has to get together this whole week and say, we're the talk of the town. Let's keep this momentum rocking. Brah. Brah. I, I, I'm not even kidding you, man. I watched the MTV Challenge up front because that's just more captivating. And that was the number one show last night, the challenge on MTV. So BC was not alone. Because, honestly, CT versus Fessy is more intriguing than any of these shit shows. It just is. You saw the preview of CT and Fessy, you gotta watch the challenge. But I watch AEW and NXT in their entirety afterwards, and I don't get to bed till about 4 or 5 o'clock. That's okay. Need to be up at 5.30. At least I get an hour and a half of sleep. But every time I would tune in when there was a challenge commercial, I'd tune over to AEW to see what type of momentum they were capturing for their audience from last week's Britt Baker Thunder Rosa matchup. What type of momentum are they bringing? And I kid you not, I saw Miro talking about some arcade extravaganza match. That's how they're using Miro. I saw, I don't even know what they're doing with fucking Mox right now. I saw two six-man tags. Two. One multi-man tag isn't enough. Let's do two. I, I would not doubt that this company is going to do a trios championship in the near future. It's coming. I can already sense it. Two six-mans. I got a weird Rose Conti matchup afterwards. Everybody just started coming out. Sheeta, everybody with kendo sticks. Matt Hardy comes out because he says the bunny should have gotten a chance at some shit. And, and it's awkward because everyone's staring at one another. Not even the camera knows where to go to. The commentators, they just shut the fuck up because they don't know who the fuck to talk about. And then we go to commercial. So... That women's division that was on fire, electric last week, this is what we turned it into this week. A charade, a circus, a sideshow. And you know I'm damn right. And then I saw Dark Order and Darby Allen in the main event. So they followed up last week's main event with the Dark Order and Darby. And the same people that say Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss are horrible are the same people getting their rocks off and rubbing their fucking cock to Darby Allen in the Dark Order. Bray Wyatt sucks. A creative genius like that motherfucker. A larger than life superstar. Alexa Bliss doing her best work ever. Randy Orton in that storyline. But that sucks. Give me... I almost said New World Order. Yeah, I'll take fucking them. Give me the Dark Order and Darby Allen. Bitch, please. Bitch, please. 
fuck you dealing with, Bri? You ain't gonna pull that shit on BC. Bray and Alexa are trash. Bray and Alexa is garbage. Bray and Alexa is horrible. I'm going to watch the Dark Order and Darby in the main event right now. I'm going to watch two, two six-man tags so I can see my spot fest and watch nobody fucking sell. I'm going to watch Rose and Conti. That's the women's division I'm tuning in for. I'm going to watch Miro play some arcade games. Fuck out of here, brah. I want to see AEW succeed, believe you me. But brah, we got to be honest. Cody asked us to be fucking honest. You want me to be honest? Stop breaking down the fourth wall. That's where you can start. You have that great main event last night with Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. And what happens five minutes later? They're literally videoing them hugging each other. Daps. Britt Baker's getting thumbtacks taken out of her by Doc Sampson and talking about how she hopes she gets a Meltzer five star out of this. You can't break down that wall, brah. You can't break down that fucking wall. Are you legit or are you not? You pulling in a damn great main event. You want everybody to be talking about that shit. You don't want anybody talking about the fucking rating. That Dave Meltzer is going to give you. And they're hugging. Thunder Rosa and Britt, man. They're supposed to be in this lights out fucking bloodbath type of a match. And AEW is showing them that fucking night, hugging each other, breaking down that fourth wall, telling the world, oh, wrestling's predetermined and planned anyway. Don't worry about it. Everybody knows by now. That supernatural shit in WW, that's fucking horrible. But these two going in an apparent war and then afterwards hugging each other, yeah, that's acceptable. You can't, you can't go any more forward with it now. You just had that fucking war, and now where do you go with it? You just saw them hugging each other, throwing daps, talking about how they hope they get five stars. They worked themselves. That's another reason why pro wrestling sucks today, because the wrestlers themselves are making it impossible to give a fuck. Social media is ruining these fucking superstars, and I use that term fucking lightly these days. NXT, I'm not going to name who it was. There was an NXT superstar, a female, who said that social media actually led to her depression. And when I checked, because, you know, BC, he's not on fucking social. I have them, but I don't go on them because they're fucking stupid. And I like to fucking be much more positive than what is on social. So this female says social media actually led to depression. And when you check, she's still on it. She's still on it, tweeting almost every fucking day from what I saw. If it's leading to your fucking depression, get the fuck off of it. Why would you do something that is making you physically fucking ill? And at the same time, ruining your character and your fucking product. Because that's what social media is doing. Don't fool yourself and say, oh, basically, basically what happens is, is it helps their character social. And, and it helps their brand. What do you, what, you can't have your cake and eat it too, unless you're doing what Zack Ryder did when social media first came to the forefront. Nowadays, all I'm seeing is characters, wrestlers, superstars, people ruining their characters online, squashing their own storylines that they've invested time into. You see, Britt Baker over here, man, and, and something came across my attention on this too when I put up the audio. Conan and Disco were talking about this very match. They were talking about Jim Cornette's critique of it, Meltzer's critique. Everybody's got their dog in the fight, right? If you're listening to Meltzy Boy, he loves anything that AEW does and he's going to stroke his how you doing on it. Jim Cornette is going to hate everything AEW does on it. All right. So you listen to Conan and Disco, who I never didn't even know they had a fucking podcast. This came across my attention and they were spot on, man. They were spot on about breaking down the fourth wall and how it's actually ruining professional wrestling and ruined Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. Listen to this shit. This is Conan in a disco. This is Disco Inferno talking about Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker. Hopefully you guys can hear this. So I, I, I predicted this too. 
It wouldn't be worth it. They drew 780,000 viewers for the show where, where girls bled all over each other. And the, the thing I didn't like about it was is the way it was presented on this show. You're presenting it as a blood feud, but as soon as the match is over, you're putting all this stuff on social media where everybody's hugging each other. She's talking about one in five stars. And it's like, so you booked a blood feud and you just used, you went into like work mode as soon as the thing was over. And I'm like, I, I just, this is just a, a mistake again for me. You know, why would you not just continue if it was this violent match? Why wouldn't they just stay in character afterwards and film some stuff of them staying in character? They film stuff of them breaking character and talking about, oh, I hope this gets five stars. And, you know, that's the best thing. And yeah, well. I'm like, come on. It's like, this, you know, point, I mean, there's, there's a way to do this. But just the fact that the girls are going through thumbtacks and getting colored out doesn't mean that they're like, that's like groundbreaking and they're equal. Bro, anybody could do that. Yeah. Anybody could go out there and bleed and stuff. But the, to me, that's in this day and age, that that's like you're going way too far to try to get over. You, it's just unnecessary. It's, what is it even a pay-per-view? No. It's like regular. I'm like, what are they doing? And so they, Cornette was right, bro. It's like some of these TV executives could look at that and all this blood and gore and so they go, I'm not, you know, the, the wrong people see that. They're going to take that off TV. Yeah, but it's like uh, Wall. She said here, the UFC's on regular cable. It's real fights, and it has has blood. It has women beating the out of each other, and that fight that he mentioned was certainly disturbing. Yeah, but it's not real. This they're not they're not getting the blood because they're beating each other up. They're getting the blood because everybody knows they're cutting each other open. Yeah, Yeah. that's a huge difference. Did you like that match, Joe? Yeah, I did. For more, I mean, I didn't love it like crazy like everyone, but I was like, I, well, they, I, I they give them do, credit for, for, for doing that kind of match. They would do better ratings if every match was like that and it was just a visual orgy of, of violence, you know? But it's like, well, it's not, you can't do it. It's not worth it. It's not, it's absolutely not worth it. I mean, if, 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 if Britt Baker is willing to do, is willing to go through thumbtacks, bust her sub, cut herself open, to take Death Valley drivers on on on, the, on ladders and to do all this stuff and come back and you're saying that your, your goal was to get five stars? It's like seriously, what on earth are these these, these performers these days thinking? You know, it's like all right. I mean, let, let I, me, I don't. Go ahead. Yeah, I just think that you hated it so much, you're looking for every reason not to like it. The, like as if nothing good happened in the match. Number true, one, true. No, 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 I never, never okay. said that. I said it was hard for me to watch because of the blood and gore. Okay, well. This is what I would say. Uh, you'd probably have no problem if there was blood and gore and it was men. That right. division kind of sucks in general. It does. And we had Britt Baker admitting that they had the lowest ratings. Yeah. Uh, to me, I don't see what they were seeing in Britt Baker. I, I thought she was all over too much TV and she wasn't, she wasn't really having good matches. This was finally a good match. I think she and Thunder Rosa wanted to prove to everybody we can bring it. I had no problem because, like you said, it's a blood feud. Um, I think they put together a really good match. They went out there. They did something different. You don't see women bleeding every day. I don't think the, I don't think the company would take them off TV. I'm sure they told them there was going to be blood, Definitely. just like there's been blood in other matches. Definitely. It got them a little bit of a buzz. But I will say, But I will say this which I do agree with you on this, and this might be me being old school. I am not a fan at all, at all, bro, of after the match breaking the fourth wall. Right. Especially, quickly. especially like as soon as the show ended. Bro, like, like, the other, like, the, like the other day, Joe might remember this, cause yep. my, but there was a match not too long ago where if you remember, they beat the shit out of each other and then the other guy went and fist bumped the other guy while he was on his knees. And I brought this up on the show. I forgot who it was. Yeah, okay. And I'm like, bro, do that in the dressing room. When you get to the back, hug them, kiss them, blow them, take pictures. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, bro, I mean, in the and, and, bro, sometimes that'll happen in Mexico. Two guys will have a really great match, like a heel and a face, and they'll hug each other and raise their arms. And I'm like, why don't you just fucking give them an engagement ring and kiss them while you're at it? I mean, this is, how do I continue this now? The fans do not want to see that. Right. How, <laughs> how do I... That was great. All right, guys, hold on. Sorry. All right, guys. <laughs> Hopefully you're still with me. So that was uh, Disco and Conan, and uh, I agree with a little bit of both of them. It sounds like Disco just didn't like anything about it. Too bloody for him, too gory. I don't agree with that. They did something original. It was badass. But I agree with him and Conan. You can't break down the fourth wall immediately after. Like Disco said, instead of 
doing footage. Afterwards, you get interviews with Thunder in character, Brit in character, and then you film segments even afterwards, not just interviews. But instead, they did the whole package where uh, everyone's proud of them and Tony's uh, hugging them and, and, and Thunder Rosa and Britt are actually hugging each other. You're breaking the fourth wall down 10 minutes after the match. You're giving your own audience no reason to tune in next week. There's no continuation. We just saw you hug. Social media is ruining professional wrestling as much as Vincent Kennedy McMahon is. That's the truth. This new technology day and era is, is killing pro wrestling. Every wrestler having being so easily accessible on social and, and having their fucking feelings all up in a bunch too. You say something bad about a pro wrestler online and 90% of the time you might even get a fucking response. Fuck are these people doing, man? So that's a huge thing, man. The fourth wall has to stop being broken down. People have to stop. Just because you have a good match does not mean we need to see a photo of you and your opponent hugging each other afterwards. We don't need to see it. We, are, we have ran the respect thing into the wall and it has helped kill pro wrestling. Back in the day, you went to war and people believed you were in that fucking war until you said such or we saw such. Now we're seeing and hearing such 10 minutes afterwards. We get it. It's a show. We get it's pre-planned. It's predetermined. It's scripted. We get it. It's always been. And if you're someone like BC, you knew it was predetermined and planned and scripted when you were a kid. But why did you still fall for everything and love it? Not just because you were a fucking kid, because my stepdad did it, my fucking uncle. Grown-ups were into these storylines. Why? Because they made it such. They made it real for us to believe that world. When you stop believing in the world, you might as well stop watching the show. Nobody's going to watch Stranger Things if every two minutes they're doing a how this was fucking filmed segment. A year later, you might want to see bloopers. You might want to see the behind the scenes. But for those 13 episodes, 12, whatever Netflix is giving you, you want to be in that world. You don't want to see Eleven getting in the costume and then watch number number four. You don't want to see the fucking bloopers going into episode number five. It's not a sitcom. You want to get into the Stranger Things world or Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, The Sopranos. What are you doing when you're watching those shows? You're in that world. Britt Baker and Thunder lights out Bloodbath because that's how bad their war had gotten to. That's how much they can't stand one another. Ten minutes later, though, they're hugging. And Britt Baker's asking, oh, I hope Meltzer gives us five stars. I saw something else. Britt Baker is on a Renee Paquette's fucking Paquette, Renee Young's podcast. And she's like, I hope Lita and Triss watched it. Everybody is fanboying and fangirling out. I miss when wrestlers played the character off screen too. It's going to have to come back. Somebody is going to have to, man. When I see The Undertaker on Twitter, that's when I knew I had to get the fuck off. I'm going to get to more of this shit too, man. Um, what's up, Amp Unit? I, I don't have a lot of time this evening, but I wanted to talk with you guys a little bit anyway. Um, I saw some supers already come in too. I just want to say uh, what up to my tried and true. Christopher Blackshear is up in here with a coffee 499. LA Knight just debuted. He's, lo he's losing already. They're already screwing up his booking. Christopher, I would ask you a question if you don't mind. Are you surprised? I think I know your answer. Thank you, brother. Mr. Charles Grin with a five spot up in this bitch. What up, Mr. Charles? Do you believe Taker should be inducted before Kane, or do you think it's already Kane's time to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? The thing with that, Mr. Charles, is they're doing Kane because it's no harm, no foul. Kane definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, and B, there's no crowd. You can't have Undertaker go now because there has to be a crowd, just like The Rock. Timing is everything. So you need a big name still. Kane is still a big name in WWE for Vince. So, I mean, whether he is for you or me, that's another story. But Kane did contribute a lot to the, to the company. 
There's not going to be a crowd. This is a no harm, no foul thing for me. Kane definitely should be going in now. Undertaker when there's a big crowd. Not saying Kane doesn't deserve a crowd, but they need it's business. You have to have a name like Kane. they're bringing in Kane now. I have no problem with this, Mr. Charles Grin. Undertaker will be there. This was not about seniority or who deserves it more. I promise you. Thank you, Mr. Charles Grin. Uh, PB Silla pride up in this bitch. 499. What up, PB Silla? MTV is about music television just as much as wrestling entertainment is about entertainment. Oh, I agree, bro. I, I'm old school PB Silla pride. I remember MTV when it was music videos, bro. So trust me, I'm with you. But uh, they came up with a show decades ago, uh, decades ago called Real World and uh, Road Rules. And then they merged them into a competition show called The Challenge. And uh, I was hooked from the beginning. So, But I agree with you, man. MTV has went to shit. Uh, aside from the challenge, I would never even turn that on. PB Silipride, thank you, man. And you are correct. Bring back music on music television. There's a crazy concept. Murder Hornet 5 Spot. What up, Murder Hornet? Thank you for the coffee, dude. Only for Baker to cut a promo on Rosa a week later. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right, brah. Great match. Went to war. Damn near tried killing one another. Afterwards, they're hugging and, and taking videos and posting it online. And then the next week, I hate you again. Well, don't you think a big part of the audience, you're only pulling in 750-something thousand anyway. Don't you think at least half of that is, ca is catching you online? Can't you play the story a little bit? Murder Hornet, thanks, brah. Mr. Anything for Salinas. Buy spot coffee. What up, Mr. Anything for Salinas? Imagine the Fiend in a rivalry with 2004 Undertaker. OMG. I just salvated a bit because damn sure Paul London, Jamie Noble was not captivating in 04. Although I did like J.B. Noble. I'm Jamie Noble. Remember he used to have uh, Nydia, his main squeeze in the trailer park. <laughs> but uh, yeah, bro, give me that Undertaker with it. Give me any version of Undertaker with The Fiend and I'm in. I got to see him a couple of times, but The Fiend is a whole nother fucking level. Thank you, brother. SOS TDM 6172 spot. I miss y'all, BC. I've been so busy. Red team, go. Um, dude, as long as you're kicking ass, working your ass off, making that money, uh, kicking the world's ass, man, one day at a time, one hour at a time. SOS, you don't got to apologize for shit, bro. These vids, these streams will be up later on the channel. You just whoop that ass. Thank you for that coffee, bro. Uh, Sheriff Rivers, uh, five spa. Thank you, Sheriff Rivers. Sorry if you went over this, but Peacock is erasing all non-PG content from the WWE Network. Talk about sheer stupidity. Yeah, uh, well, you knew they were going to do that, though, because we live in this PC society and world. So there's no way NBC, which is overseeing Peacock division, you knew that they were not going to allow a lot of that shit, man. Uh, I can think of 20 topics slash situations that are probably no longer on that network right now. I'm not going to go over them. There's a lot I can think of off the top of my dome piece, but I'm not surprised, Sheriff Rivers, and it is sheer stupidity. It was back then. Let it be. Know how to know how to parent your children and let them know that life was different 20 years ago. Nobody, people weren't as much as bitches back then. People weren't fucking little pansies. People didn't try to cancel everybody back then. It's okay to teach your children that life was different back then without canceling it or fucking erasing it. Sorry, that's a side rant. Absolutely agree, Sheriff Rivers. Stupidity at the sheerest level. Ah, uh, young blood, uh, 085. What up, young blood? With that five spot coffee. Thank you, brother. I'm still not a fan of the fact that they had Roman actually tap at fast lane. Much love, BC. Right back to you, young blood, 085. Thank you for that coffee, dude. And I agree with you. There's ways you could have went about business differently than having Roman Reigns actually tap out. I do not fucking like that. And I'm the guy who said Roman can afford to lose the title and he's going to be fine. And I stand by that. But if you were going to do that type of finish anyway, you don't need the extra layer to that story being Roman tapped out to Daniel Bryan. Unless they want Daniel Bryan in this match as a triple threat. And that's bullshit because Daniel Bryan is a third wheel. Nobody needs to see Daniel Bryan and Roman again. The first half of that 30-minute match sucked. It was boring. The second half absolutely delivered. And that's why it went into the good column. On my good, the bad, and the ugly. But we don't need to see it again. It's not mania-worthy right now. Edge versus Roman are going to tear it down if they give them at least 20 minutes. Watch. That's at least. I want to see them with a half an hour plus. But the storylines alone, the promos between Edge and Roman, Daniel Bryan threes a crowd. 
And he is that third person. He's the third wheel. Nobody needs to see Daniel Bryan in this shit. We don't need to see a triple threat. Edge, Roman, Daniel Bryan, see yourself to the door. And we love Daniel Bryan, but hit the bricks. Anyway, I'm pissed off about that too, Youngblood085. Thanks, brother. Mr. Anything for Salinas, another coffee. T uh, talent from every wrestling should sign a contract where they can't interact on social media. Might seem a little Vince-ish, but keep that magic. Mr. Anything, mark my words. And then you're right, this may sound Vince-ish. This may, people might be like, BC, that's so mean, man. I would literally, if you were in my company, you do not have any personal social media that is going to infiltrate or put out, I should say, content from the company i.e if you just had an awesome main event match in my promotion and then you sent out a photo of you and your competitor that you just went to war with as they're still pulling thumbtacks out of you and you put a picture of you guys hugging when i the promoter want to push this feud another two months that's not acceptable and that will not be allowed on your social media so i would definitely have some type of fucking jurisdiction on that mr anything thank you you're absolutely correct Dante Jaren 23, five spot coffee. Thank you, Dante. BC, you the man. Oh, I know this. I know this, baby. I know this, Dante Jaren. Thank you, brother. You are correct that social media is ruining wrestling. I'm glad that I was able to grow up enjoying wrestling before all of this. Dante Jaren, I'm going to tell you something right now, Dante. Two things, or maybe they, they kind of blend together. Number one, I am so glad that I grew up in the 80s, 90s, period, with everything television shows, movies, music. Everything was better in the 80s and the 90s than today. But when you talk wrestling, Dante Jaren, and no social media back then, none of that shit. Bro, we lived in such blessed times. And there isn't a day, Dante Jaren 23, I'm telling you right now, there isn't a day that goes by that I am not thankful to have grown up when I did. I'm telling you right now, man. And to have been in that attitude era as a fucking teenager, to see ruthless aggression come in afterwards, and still hold its own, and then to see social media and the, the technology and all the fucking smarts and everybody came up after that, man, and everybody's opinion became fact. That's when wrestling started to be ruined. And the wrestlers, instead of trying to solve the problem, added to the problem by becoming those social media smarts themselves. Marks themselves. Dante Jaren 23, thank you, bro. Almost 100 up in the likes, man. Thank you. I just saw that. That's fucking badass. I've just been ranting this whole fucking time. Oh, man. We got some more up in here. Hold up. Oh, I see. I see PB Silipride with another coffee, I believe. Four ninety nine. dollars PB Silipride. Thank you, brother. We know it's scripted. Doesn't mean you have to shove it down our throat. Exactly right, brother. <laughs> exactly. We know it's scripted. We're just trying to, as we watch the show and afterwards, we're just trying to suspend the reality and, and be in that world. Anything that we want to look up, we'll look up afterwards, no doubt. But we want to talk about Thunder and Britt Baker, the match they had and where we go from here in that feud. We don't want to see you guys hugging it out fucking 10 minutes later after that war because now we can't talk about it. What are we going to say? The feud goes here and here. Now we just look like complete nerds. They look like nerds as competitors, warriors, wrestlers, and we look like nerds as fans. Joey's Adventures, five spot. What up, Joey's? Thank you, brother. Double standards ruined wrestling. Example, people complain about Alexa being Fiend's weakness, but have no issue with Scarlet being Carrion's. Exactly. And you know, I love both, man. Those are my... Bray Wyatt and Alexa, I am so high on, and I am so high on Carrion Cross slash Killer Cross and fucking Scarlet, brah. Love them. I can't wait till they one day meet one another. So much you can do with them. But Joey's Adventures, absolutely correct. Carlos, dude, I'm glad, dude, this was as last minute as it gets when it comes to streams. Carlos, it's good you caught this with that coffee. What's going on, BC? Good to see you on today. Good to see you up in here, Carlos. You know that. Swig. Good to have Carlos up in here. You know that. Christian Renteria. Renteria, I'm going to say. Christian Renteria. Christian with a 99. What? <laughs> Thursday evening bomb? What? Christian with a hunji. You know what we do for that, man. Any AMP unit members tried and true up in here. Coffee's fire emojis right now for Christian, brah. Come on. I'm looking at this fucking chat. You guys got to show love to Christian for keeping the AMP man amped. 
There you go, fucking Christopher. Thank you, Lucas. There you go, Blueprint Nation. Kavion Martin, JR9, Kirby. Christian, yeah, you, you earned that praise, bro. That's all this all love is for you, Christian. John Shannon, DLB, Dirty Little Bastard, King J, Stacy Brown, Santivia Major, Power Core. Javi Wu 31, Triple J 82, 882. Christian says, keep it going, man. You know it, brother, man. Well, hey, when, when you drop 100 and I drink that much coffee, we're going to continue to get amped thanks to people like you, brah. <laughs> Robert Coleman, that's what I'm talking about. Gaming Francis, Batty Banks. War Dog. Damante. Marie Applewaite. This, this is for you, Chris. All this love, man. All this fire and coffee. Appreciate it, my man. In the middle of a Thursday evening, man. I wasn't going to go live. You guys are making it all fucking worth it right now, man. That feedback, even if you're not, I don't need a fucking dime from anybody. The fact that you guys are enjoying the chat, enjoying the fucking stream, that makes me fucking happy, man. Even as I'm ranting about how pissed off I am right now with the state of wrestling. And that's not just AEW or NXT, that's WWE for sure. That's just the state of pro wrestling and where pro wrestlers are right now in their mindset. It's got to fucking change. Bro, again, Christian... That's area, man. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate that, bro. That is fucking huge. All that love is for you, my man. That's going directly into the Hall of Fame when it comes to supers. Thank you. Javi Wu 31, two spot. Javi Wu 31, what up, dog? Cody's reality show won't be as funny as Miz's. Yeah, well, that's another thing, though. Every time I would turn, I'm watching the challenge because to me, it's more captivating. I keep turning on AEW and I see Rose and Conti and some weird shit. That's how you follow last week's women's division with Baker and Thunder. And then I see fucking everyone's clueless. Matt Hardy's out there. A bunny is out there. Not a bad bunny. Although she could be bad in the bed. Who knows? And she's staring at Sheeta, who looks like Sheeta was go planning on going to a wedding. Sheeta hit the ring in a white fucking outfit, heels. Where were you going to, Sheeta? And everyone's awkwardly staring. Then I see two six-man tags. Then I got fucking Miro talking about an arcade match. Oh, he's doing much better in AEW. Thank goodness he went there. He was being booked horribly in WWE. Thank goodness AEW knows what to do with Miro. We get to watch him in an arcade battle next week. Whatever the fuck that means. Darby Allen and, and, and Dark Order are fucking in the main event. I see a, a, an announcement that Cody and Brandy are going to have a, a reality show. I was just starting to, to, to love and, and appreciate the fact that WWE had stopped promoting the Bella show. And then Miz and Maurice, I, I have that 17 times being played every Monday night as a promo. And now when you watch AEW, we got to watch Cody and Brandy's promo playing 17 fucking times. The, the, the AEW does a lot of what WWE does. They just take what they do and they do it over here. They take Shaq, they take Snoopy Dogg, they take uh, the reality shows, they take the gimmickry. That's right, that's a word I made up, gimmickry. I mean, are you an alternative to Vince and WWE or are you, are you just the same thing with different letters? Anyway, Javi Wu 31. Yeah, now we have Cody and Brandy's show. Oh boy. Now we get to watch 13 episodes of Brandy and her pregnancy. And I love Cody. I love Brandy. I love Maurice and I love Miz, to be honest. I know I'm hard on Miz, but his booking sucks. That doesn't mean we need more reality shows, man. If they took this much time and effort and put it into their actual characters and their wrestling storylines, we'd be great. But no, they're on to every other fucking thing. So in the ring, we get mediocrity. Oh, I'm dropping some fucking facts today, bro. I'm not playing around. Jacob Donnelly, five spot coffee. What up, Jacob? In my opinion, the only wrestler good at staying in character is MJF. Every interview and podcast he's on, he's the same guy and I respect that. Jacob, right on the head, man. You just hit the nail right on the fucking head. Thank you. Perfect prime example. Jacob Donnelly just brought up somebody. His name is MJF and AEW. If you don't watch, Google him. Check him out on YouTube. This guy does interviews. He's literally the character MJF. He just shits on the pe people he's interviewing with. That's what I'm talking about, bro. When you do little shit like that, that is actually big. When it comes to the overall layers, it's actually big shit. But to many people, that's little. It's going to work wonders down the road for you, your storyline, and the overall product. I promise you, I've been watching this shit over three decades. 
Perfect example, Jacob. Why can't everybody just do that? You don't have to do your storyline and then afterwards go on social and break down the fourth wall because everybody knows it's scripted. So you don't have to add to the misery. If I go to war with somebody for 20, 25 minutes and I got tax in my fucking back and everybody's talking about this amazing match, blood streaming down my face, I want to sell that shit for as long as I can. I'm not taking a picture with my opponent 10 minutes later and posting it. Carlos, Fispa, what up, Carlos? Carlos, Carlos. BC, I may be one of the few, but I enjoyed Baker's promo. Last oh, I, I, yeah, Baker's promo was probably the brightest spot of the night last night. Mick Foley, thanks for the thumbs up, but it took you 20 years. It took me one night. I loved Baker's promo last night. A couple of times, she kind of hung on what she was going to say next. You could tell the pauses, but she sold those pauses. And that's what I mean about Baker consistently becoming better and better every week. I noticed those small nuances that aren't so small in the development of a character. So Baker's promo last night, I liked it. You know, you, you say you changed the women's division, Thunder, but who's everybody talking about this week? You know, meaning her. I, everything about that, Carlos, I absolutely, I, I adore Britt Baker, though. I'm a huge Britt Baker fan. I just am. So that's how you know I'm always going to call it down the middle, and I'm pretty fair and consistent more than anybody else, because when I come down hard on the people I love the most... That's when you know I am being as fair as possible in this community. Nobody else wants to be fair. Everybody else wants to watch two six-man tags, a weak-ass women's program last night with Conti and Rose, some weird shit with Miro, and a stupid, pathetic main event coming off of last week's main event, this week with Dark Order and fucking Darby. And nobody wants to come out and say this is not captivating. They want to say another good show by AEW. I don't know why they're only getting 750,000 viewers. I'm telling you why. They're not captivating anybody. They're consistently good a lot of the times, no doubt. But they need to be great right now. They come off of something last week like that, and what do they do with that momentum? They, they piss on it. They literally pissed on that momentum. They did nothing with that momentum. This is shit I see Vince do up north all the time. I'm seeing the sh same shit with AEW. Hold on, guys. I got some. I want to talk more on this too, but I got some more fucking supers. Hold on. Uh, Pedro W is up in here with a coffee five spot. Inconsistency with realism. Thy name is AEW. I, I think that's perfectly said. It doesn't matter who it pisses off. We want a on this channel. If you're newer, if you're a new subscriber, we're not just shitting on AEW. I mean, we're, we're right now we're shitting on every fucking company because wrestling sucks right now for the reasons I'm telling you. It's easy just to say Vince McMahon and this and that, which we'd be correct. But it's also social media and all these wrestlers being on it. It's all these wrestlers breaking down the fourth wall when they should just shut the fuck up and stop posting for a minute. But we want to see AEW succeed. I want NXT to be the NXT we once loved. The only way to do that is to voice out fairness and realism. Cody asked us to do that. Tell us what we're doing right. Tell us what we're doing wrong. On this channel, I tell Cody what he's doing right all the time. Whether he wants to listen or not, that's on him. I also tell them what they're doing wrong. What I said in this stream so far, the last 38 fucking minutes, or what you heard Conan say, or Disco Inferno earlier in this very stream, that's all truth. That's not just opinion. This is literally what is helping to kill pro wrestling, more specifically AEW, right out of the gate. So, Pedro, you're right. Inconsistency... Top, top of the order for this company. Thank you, Pedro. Chelsea Elaine with that two spot. Hit those coffees and smash the likes for the ant. Yeah, we're almost at 125. So I agree, Chelsea, and I appreciate everybody, man. Uh, I literally told people I was going live seven minutes before I went live. So <laughs> that's as impromptu. On a Thursday evening, people still either getting out of fucking school, work, whatever they got to do, grocery shopping. And here I am just live, man few hundred now tuning in. Thousands will tune in afterwards. We already got almost a buck 25 on the likes. You guys are the best. I knew you'd show up and show out, man, for the end, man. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, Dash. Dash is up in here with a 10 spot. What's that last? Riff Raff. Dash Riff Raff. 10 spot. Couple of coffees. Screw that. Peacock needs to give us exactly what I was paying for on the network. Exactly, Dash. I, that's what I was saying earlier, man. It's up to the parents to tell their fucking kids that this is how it was back then. People weren't bitches and people did not try to cancel everybody. Things didn't offend people so easily. 
10, 20 years ago. So that's why this is on your TV right now. Nowadays, we're all canceling together. Nowadays, we're all offended. Nowadays, we're all bitch boy Bradens and crybaby Karens. But no, instead, it's canceled right from the jump. So anything that offends anybody today, from yesterday, from back in the day, that's gone. Gone. Books, movies, music, wrestling. It's gone today, man. I'm thinking the kids growing up that'll be fucking watching wrestling 10, 20, 30 years, and they're not going to be able to see or even know about that unless they come across it in some legends manual down the fucking road, you know? Uh, fucking Wikipedia, the legends edition. You know, legend has it that DX and the Nation of Domination had some crazy segments together. You know what I mean? Legend has it that Steve Austin bled un like, profusely and uncontrollably during a match with Bret Hart. Legend has it that Roddy Piper in the match with the, what was it, Bad News Brown? It's no more. It's the forgotten matches. Because he was painted up. It's, that's a reflection on society in itself, Dash. I agree. Oh, I got some more, what the fuck? Damn. Thursday evening, you guys are rocking up in this. I hope I get everybody, man. <laughs> Hold up. A ton more just came in, man. Thursday evening, hello. Pedro W. with another five spot call. It's funny how when MSK was in impact, the fans said they were vanilla midgets who could only do gymnastics. But now on NXT, they're the next coming. Well, you could say that about so many, man. It all depends on preference. Am I right, Pedro? If you don't like one fucking company or you don't like them in that structure, you're going to shit on it. When they go somewhere else and they like it, oh, man, they're the next, they should have the championships. <laughs> Absolutely agree, Pedro. Rachel Rocka, five spot coffee. What up, Rachel? Thank you. Here's to 150 likes on the live. We're headed. We just passed 125. So, Rachel, we're headed toward that 150. I appreciate the coffee. Always good to see you up in here, Rachel. Thank you. Kevin Heffernor, good to see you up in the chat, dude. 499, Jim Duggan lost his push because he was caught traveling with Iron Cheek on their way to fight each other that same night at MSG. Yep. That's how real it was back then to the, to the performers. Fuck being real to the fans. Most fans back in the day knew that it was scripted and predetermined, pre-planned. We knew it. Even kids. But the performers had more respect. You would never see the four horsemen traveling with their the people that they were infused with. You wouldn't see it. When Ric Flair and Arn Anderson, they tell a great story how when they were in their beef, they were best friends. Obviously, they would travel separately. That's how it was back then. But now... The new adage is, oh, the fourth wall's already broken. Let's just continue to stomp that shit down. No, if I'm a performer in any of these companies, I'm doing what Jacob Donnelly said, what MJF is doing. I am going to be in character non-fucking-stop. That is my job. That's my career. I'm not going to tarnish my own shit, much less the storyline or the product. Exactly, Kevin. Good example there, man. We got War Dog up in here with a couple of coffees. Ten spot. War Dog says NXT views may be down, but damn, they got some good ass feuds. Finn versus Cross, Adam versus O'Reilly. Here's a mocha on me. War Dog, I appreciate it. Yeah, don't forget, Io Shirai is fucking on another level right now. Io Shirai is that motherfucker right now. So NXT is absolutely just like I say about AEW. They're consistently good. NXT has to find a way to be great, just like AEW. You see AEW always fluctuating, flu fluctuating, I can fucking speak, fluctuating around 750,000. NXT is like a fucking yo-yo. I don't know what the fuck their fan base is doing, like they're diehard. I mean, you'll see them at 650 and then they drop to like 500. Then they're near 700. Then they're at like 475. They can't decide if they want to tune in or tune out. It's going to be interesting to see when they move over to Tuesdays what the fuck the deal is. I got some news on that too, by the way. War Dog, thank you, brother. Good to see you up in here. Chelsea, two spot. Amazing timing for Thursday, BC. Much love, Ant-Man. Yeah, man. I didn't even know I was going to do this. I had some time and uh, I wanted to do uh, I wanted to do something special for you guys for showing the love more than ever lately. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this because this is one of the things I, I've kind of had to get off my chest, man. It, you know, we always talk about how Vince is ruining pro wrestling, WWE more specifically. We always talk about characters and this and that. But there's some easy solutions that everybody can start doing right now. Stop breaking down the fourth wall. 
Just because it's been destroyed does not mean that that wall cannot be pair, uh, put back up. Walls are meant to be taken down, but you can always put them back up. You can always restructure and rebuild that shit. Stop the social media bullshit too. Not everything needs to be posted. Just so you can get some fucking likes and then whatever the fuck else. Admiration and Dave Meltzer five stars. Not everything needs to be posted. Sell your own match. You busted your ass in there. Damn near killed one another. Sell it. You owe yourselves that. Britt Baker, Thunder, and everyone else who posts a photo hugging afterwards with their opponent that they just went to war with. I understand. Respect. Oh, we had respect. We had a great match. Now let's, let's watch all the smarks and the marks talk about how, how awesome this match was. No, we should be talking about where does the story go now? What happens in the, in the progression of it? What does, ha what does this character do now over this character? We can't do that anymore. It's over. They hugged each other. All right. Chelsea, thank you. Mr. Anything for Salinas, another five spot. We know you say donate to animals, but you deserve every bit because you keep us from watching redundancy in both WWE and AEW. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Anything. Mr. Anything's talking. I always tell you guys, man, a simple coffee is all you, you need to show some love. Actually, only a fucking like is all you need to show love, respect, support to the channel. But if you feel the need to, to, to get the Ant-Man a coffee, dude, that's awesome. But I always say anything more than that, donate to animals and because and, animals need help more than any of us, right? They're innocent and a lot of them are in shelters and need help and need food and water. So I always tell you guys, man, if you got extra money, give it to the fucking animals. So that's what Mr. Anything is talking about. I appreciate that, dude. I, I really do. I'll take a swig on that. But also, don't forget to help out animals when you can. <laughs> BC doesn't need any fucking money. BC doesn't need anybody buying him a coffee. I assure you, I'll be just fine. The fact that you guys show that love is cool. War Dog, another five spot. Drop those bombs, BC, because you're more explosive than the product. <laughs> War Dog, I like that. That earns a swig. Thank you, brother. Always good to see War Dog up in here. Young Blood 085 with another coffee five spot. Roman did an interview with Ryan Satin not that long ago where he did say that he has always wanted to turn heel. But here's another coffee on me, BC. Youngblood085, thank you. You don't need to, but I appreciate it. Ryan Satin not that long ago where he did say that he has always wanted... Yeah, Roman... Oh, I heard many interviews where Roman said, I've wanted to turn heel for years now. And Vince just did... We, we knew it. Vince was so fucking stubborn. He was thinking a reaction is, is a reaction, right? Any noise is a reaction. BC said from the beginning, I said, you're resting on mediocrity. You're resting on bare minimum. If you turn this guy heel, because that's what he's destined to be. Any, any average Joe Schmo could see this. Any casual wrestling fan could see he would work better as a heel. Everybody but Vince McMahon could see this. And we all said from the beginning, BC was the biggest advocate. I said, you could be getting a bigger reaction and people could be more in invested and captivated if you turn him heel. But Vince just wanted the bare minimum reaction. So, yeah, Youngblood085, I did hear and see that a lot from Roman, especially as of late. Thanks, brother. Carlos with another five R. Salute, Carlos. BC, you absolutely speak the truth and lay down the facts. Salute! Salute right back to you, Carlos. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate those words. I try, man. I piss people off in the process. That's fine. I'll wear the black hat in the community. I'll be the bad guy, the boogeyman. I'll be the fucking asshole. I'm the asshole. I'm the asshole. I'll be fine with that, bro. I'm a grown adult with big fucking muscles, and I've been through the trenches. I'm okay being the bad guy. I get off on that shit. <laughs> Goes through the fucking veins, baby. That gets me more amped. But you will, you will know the truth when it comes to this community. Thank you, Carlos. Joey's Adventures opinion on some saying Fiend is being played by Bo. Two spot Joey's Adventures. I did not hear those fucking, uh, I did not hear anybody saying that. But I miss, are we talking Bo Dallas' brother? Because I miss that son of a bitch. It was fun watching him in NXT. What, what happened to him in the main roster is what happens the most. But no, I, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that Joey's Adventures. And I wouldn't mind some, some interaction with Bo Dallas somehow. It had to be a complete character Rehaul, obviously, but I'm down with something like that if they do it in a smart way. Bray Wyatt is a fucking genius when it comes to pro wrestling. So I have no doubt in my mind Bray could insert anybody into his feuds or on his side. 
and it would be seamless and fucking pretty badass. What was that? Oh, I hope I got everybody, man. If I missed any... Oh, hold on. What is that? Chelsea Elaine with a two-spot. Will you be bringing back the Q&As? Maybe in the future. Maybe. It, it takes a lot to, to really... I mean, that takes a long time to actually manufacture those Q&A type of videos, man. So, we'll see, though, Chelsea. There's a possibility. Maybe in a more fun way even than we used to do it back in the past. Mr. Anything. Two spot. I can fucking speak clothesline t-shirt. Release it, BC. <laughs> I can fucking speak clothesline. It'll be better than any fruit roll-up we see over in Stamford, Connecticut. Every fucking raw, I see three fruit roll-ups. That's how everybody finishes these days. Thank you, Mr. Anything. Maybe, maybe that's the next shirt. Who knows? PB Silipride, 199. Cancel culture is modern day book burning. That's it. For everybody. It ain't just pro wrestling. You don't like it? Cancel it. Cancel, 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 cancel. I'm offended, I'm offended, I'm offended. That's why you stay off social. And these wrestlers stay on it and they, they engaged in stupidity. They get depressed. They start arguing. And I'm like, just get off of social. Life is better when you're off of social. I think they just fucking... Cartoons are being canceled left and right. I just saw something on that too, man. Jobby Wu 31, another five spot card. Thank you, Jobby Wu. BC, I wish you'd go live on WrestleMania night because I don't uh, I don't know about the card. We'll be having more fun with the Amp Man. Keep up the great work, bro. I know you never know when I'm gonna go live, Jobby Wu. So always obviously stay subscribed, but sometimes the tube doesn't even tell people when you're subscribed. So stay subscribed, but also keep tuning into the keep checking the channel because I go live sometimes with less than 10 minutes to tell you guys, man. I just I have time, I, I realize, I have the urge, and I just go live. So you never know. I could go live on WrestleMania, Javi. Who knows? <laughs> Appreciate the coffee, brah. Oh, look at this up in here, man. Pedro W. with a 50 spot, brah. Moxley is on Dynamite three days after a death match where he was struck in the head by an exploding barbed wire. But Inner Circle is on two weeks off TV after when you compare it to what happened to what happened with Moxley as a high school beatdown. I think I know what you're saying there, Pedro. Uh, you're saying it doesn't make sense. Moxley almost fucking died and he's back on the next week. Inner Circle is out for the next fucking month, basically. Attention to detail. It's what Vince does not do. It was what we were hoping Tony Khan was going to do. And Tony's not doing it. Exactly, Pedro. Thank you, man. My own fire and, uh, and coffee emojis over to fucking Pedro as well for that fitty spot. A swig for Pedro W. Absolutely correct. If I miss any supers, I didn't think there'd be this fucking many on a, on a Thursday evening like this. Uh, out of the blue live stream. You guys are fucking... <laughs> you guys are unreal on this. So I might miss some. I'll get you in the next vid. Joey's Adventures. Uh, I, I got you, right? Some saying Fiend is being played by Bo. Yeah. And then I saw... Another... Another fitty spot by Jeff Spinard. Another fitty, Jeff Spinar, man. Salut. Man, that's some coffees too, brah. Christian. Christian, Pedro, Jeff Spinar. Damn, brah. Hey, BC, I'm not sure the lineup for WrestleMania. I know Voice America, which is an online platform with 3.5 million listeners, and I host a show called Finding Your Frequency, and I want you as a guest. LMK, and I'll reach out to you to book Jeff Spinar, we'll see man I don't do any shows or anything like that but I'll, I'll try to keep that in mind remind me later if you ever hear me talking about doing shows remind me again but I, I, I'm, a, I'm a one man act solo style but we'll see man uh, I, I always said if I do something out of the gate with somebody else uh, it's going to be my boy in the community, JD from New York. That's going to be where we're going to have a couple of drinks and just get amplified. And I think uh, viewers are going to like something like that. That's the only time I think I'm going to work with somebody else right now or even do uh, some type of an interview thing. Other than that, not right now, Jeff, but remind me, remind me later on in the future if you start seeing BC do some shows. But Jeff, I appreciate that fitty spot and... Uh, the love and respect you show the channel, I will definitely remember that, man. So, 
At least I put you ahead of the bunch, man. <laughs> In terms of, oh yeah, you helped out the channel big time, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And best of luck with that too, man, that show. That's a lot of fucking, that's a lot of eyeballs that have the uh, capability to tune in. Jeff Spinard, yeah, and by the way, Jeff, you've got some, uh, you got some fire emojis and coffees as well. That's showing the love right back to you, brah. Thank you. I think I got every, I think I got everybody up front. If I missed any super guys, what can I fucking do? I mean, you guys came fucking balling again today out of the blue. We just hit over a buck 50 on the ups. A buck, we're going to a buck 75, impromptu as fuck. You guys rock, man. Uh, AEW pulled in 757,000 viewers this week. And uh, hold on, Jamal uh, Strachan. Hopefully I said, well, Jamal, two spot. We'll leave it at that. BC, you should teach promo classes for WWE. They would have to pay me some damn good money and they would have to assure me that they can have those promos in their character when they get called up. If I'm spending all this time on pro wrestlers down at the PC, and then Vince gets their ha his hands on him and says, you can't do anything BC taught you, then I don't want to do it. No amount of money in the world is going to be acceptable because everything that I'm fucking yelling for and everything that I am working for is being destroyed by the old man. So I would not only need uh, some money for that, a good pay, but I need reassurance more than the money. I need respect. But yeah, Jamal, I wouldn't mind that, man, because I... I Listen, you, you think BC doesn't know that I cut better promos than 99% of wrestlers today? Of course I know that. If I was in a company, I understand that I have that it factor that 90 plus percent of wrestlers today lack. And that sucks. It's good for you guys. You guys get to enjoy and be entertained by these streams and these videos because I'm a character, right? Or I'm in character. I have that it factor. But it sucks for BC a lot that I have to review something that I'm better than them at promo-wise. That I'm more entertaining 90% of the time. That sucks half the time, man. Thank you, Jamal, though, for those kind words. Ah, so AEW pulled in 757. Oh, Rachel, rock another five spot, Corey. Let's get the 175 now. Red team, go. Rachel's getting ballsy now. She's going up to 175. Let's give Rachel exactly what she's asking for. Let's get BC. Let's give BC that, too. Why not? Let's get that the 175 within the next couple of fucking minutes, man. Let's rock 175 on the ups for Rachel and BC. Thank you, Rachel, for that coffee. That's badass. And we're, we're about to hit that 175 too. Uh, Zane, 68071. Zane with a two spot says, you and JD would be the best tag team in the IWC. Well, we don't want to fucking wrestle, man. If we did, I would tell JD, no offense to him. I'm sure he can handle his own, but I'd say sit on the fucking outside and let the big dog do his fucking thing. If I need to tag in JD, I'll let him come in and get the pin. But BC just wants to rock it. I'll be the fucking, I'll be the guy doing the fucking walloping and the wabaka -ing. But what me and JD need to do is just get some creative control and help make this shit better. We don't need to be in the fucking ring. We need to be making shit better. And we disagree on a lot of shit. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably be tussling and fucking arguing with one another, but the product you end up getting will be fucking badass. Mr. Charles Grid, two spot. BC, you're the goat on the tube, period. I know. Thank you, brother. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Mr. Charles Grid, I appreciate it, man. I do. You rock, man. You guys are the goats, man. The fucking amp unit. You're the best in the fucking... Oh, we're about to hit 175 for Rachel and BC. Thank you. Oh, you guys are badass, man. All right, I have to get through this, man. You guys are fucking <laughs> balling. AEW, let me try a fourth time. AEW pulls in 757,000. NXT pulled in 678,000. So AEW, with that 757, is down 11,000 from last week's 768,000. So why the fuck? How is it possible to be coming off that type of a main event last week with the world of pro wrestling talking about you, your match, and your company, and you end up losing 11,000 this week? That is bullshit, major bullshit. And that tells you there's a lot of flaws in that company of AEW. But I understand the cool thing to do is just shit on WWE and ignore AEW's flaws. 
but there's a lot of flaws that are preventing AEW from getting a million viewers. Breaking down the fourth wall, that's just one of them. Their wrestlers going on social media and acting like they're marks, that's another problem. Not being able to capitalize on momentum, not being able to create consistently great shows and not just consistently good shows, these are all problems. Bringing in Shaq just for one night of fucking eyeballs, but alienating your tried and true base, which is like fucking Shaq, we didn't like it in WWE, we don't like it now. Snoopy Dogg. Watching him 10 times in WWE, and now here he is jumping off the top rope in AEW. Miro, who we all said in WWE, Vince botched his booking. AEW will do him correct. And here he is in AEW, and Miro has been an afterthought. In fact, he's going to be in some weird arcade bullshit next week. But nobody wants to talk about that. They want to turn the blind eye to it. They want to say, oh, Bray Wyatt and Alexa are horrible. And then they want to turn over here and go, what a main event with Dark Order and Darby Allen. Dark Order and Darby Allen are captivating you more than Alexa, Randy Orton, and Bray. Come on, bro. The supernatural shit makes me not believe in pro wrestling, BC. Okay. Thunder Baker, or Thunder Baker, there's a new one. That's, that's going to be the fucking, uh, that's the next character. Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, and then Thunder Baker. And then you're going to have fucking, uh, uh, Britt Rosa. Mix them up. So you have Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker last week, and they're taking a picture hugging each other two minutes later. And you have behind the scenes of them hugging each other on, on fucking camera. That's not taking you out of pro wrestling in the believability, but the supernatural shit is. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If you're gonna, if you're gonna constantly talk about Raw's ratings being so low, but then when AEW cannot come anywhere near a million consistently, and then you go and say, why does everyone talk about ratings? Ratings don't even matter. Or you say, I wish everybody would just enjoy both shows and stop talking about ratings. When you're the same dumbass that's going to talk about how low Raw's ratings are. Which is it? You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to be real, if you're going to have a social media platform, if you're going to try to have your voice heard and your stupid opinion... Make it a little bit make sense, a little bit of logic, just a little bit of common sense, just a little bit, just a little bit of common sense and logic. Otherwise, your opinion is absolute trash. I'm sick of seeing the double standard. We shit on WWE all the time because it most of the time sucks. But you can't now watch AEW and say everything is fucking flawless and great because there's a lot of shit on AEW that sucks. That show they put on last night sucked. Two six-man tags were needed. That weird Rose, uh, fucking Nyla Rose and Conti matchup with all the BS afterwards. That's how you carry momentum from last week's women's main event. That's the women's segment you have this week. You have Miro talking about some arcade bullshit. You have that type of main event with Dark Order and Darby Allin. And that's what you're producing. And you go online and I, and I promise you, because I see this comes across my attention all the fucking time. People are like, what another great show by AE Dub, AE Dub, AE Dub. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where was the great show? Do you think it was good? Is that your opinion? That's fine. But if you're going to call it great, that's no longer an opinion. That's stupidity. You're not stating a fact. You're stating a lie. If that's great, then what happens when they actually put on a great show? It's the boy that cried wolf. If something is mediocre, call it mediocre. Say it was okay. Say it was decent. If it's actually good, say it was good. If it's great, then we will call it great. Awesome belongs in awesome. Epic belongs with epic. Stop fucking lying. Just saying. Jamal with that two spot. Jamal Strachan. Hopefully I'm saying that right, man. Strachan, Strachan. Jamal is where I'm leaving it at. Two spot. I see you, dog. Thank you for that coffee. Social media hurts storylines and characters. Million percent. Million percent. BC hates social media, not just because it's fucking, it's just a waste of time, but also because if I checked anything out wrestling-wise, it just ruined their own storylines. And I was like, this is pathetic. And then I see wrestlers going, wrestlers getting upset because people are being mean or, or they're depressed because of the negativity. And I'm like, then just leave. 
Nobody's telling you you have to be on social, and it's just hurting every storyline and every character, man. Absolutely agree, Jamal. Chelsea Elaine with that two spot, still bothered by Cole saying boss time or big dog. It's boss time. It's the big dog. <laughs> does he still do the big dog? I know he still does boss time. I can't stand it. Does he still do the big dog too, Chelsea? I probably tried to block it out by now. Thank you, Chelsea. Dave Mealy with that 499. What up, Dave? Good to see you up in here. What up, Ampudit? Can't stay long. Sorry I missed the beginning, but I just had to pop up and show some love. Red team, go! Dave, thank you, man. Thank you for popping in and uh, showing the love and respect, man. This uh, vid live stream will be up later on, so check it out. Thank you, Dave. Good to see you up in here, man. Hold on. We got some more, too, man, I believe. We ain't even done yet. We got Chelsea, another, another two spot. Thunder, Baker, and Baker Thunder may become a trend. <laughs> Who fucking knows anymore, man? That might be the next hashtag. You got the uh, Mania main event, Banks and Belair, and then right underneath Thunder, Baker, and Baker Thunder. Who knows? They put everything else online, right? Everything's a fucking hashtag. Chelsea, thank you. Kevin Langhoff, 10 spot, man. A couple of coffees. Kevin, appreciate it, dude. Show him BC some love. I rewatched when The Fiend uh, debuted against Balor, one of the last epic moments I can remember. Holy shit. Chance ran out the arena. Rewatching did something to my heart. I know, man. Sometimes I gotta, I gotta bring myself back to things like that or, or bring myself back to the Attitude Era to remember what a pop truly was back then, you know? And I'm hoping that crowds help AEW and NXT, especially uh, in the months to come. I'm, I'm really hoping that crowds bring these companies back to life, but you can't blame it on just that. What they are doing, they're follying themselves. There's so many holes in their game that they can fix with or without a crowd, and they refuse to fill those gaps, to fill those holes. But yeah, Kevin, man, I find myself a lot of times when I have free time, whenever that is, going back to get my wrestling fix that's really going to fucking put some, put a spark in BC. Nothing in the last 10 years does that. Unless you're talking about moments like that with Balor and the debut of The Fiend. The only, the only pleasurable part of Raw every Monday is Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss and Randy Orton's storyline. I don't know how long you can keep that going, but for months, that's been the only thing that has woke me up just a little bit. Kevin, thanks, brother. Oh, damn, I think I got everybody. Woo! Impact, you guys hear about this? Impact is moving to Thursdays because they obviously heard that NXT is most likely moving to Tuesdays. So get this, from what we're hearing, this is true. Monday Night Raw on Monday, Tuesdays are going to be NXT, Wednesday will be AEW, Thursday will be TNA Impact, Friday will be SmackDown, Sunday obviously reserved for pay-per-view. So that's a lot of wrestling. Do, do people even watch Impact anymore or is it is it called TNA Impact or just Impact? I want to do a little survey in the chat. Does anybody watch Impact anymore? Some people do. A lot of no's already. Maybe once in a while I saw. Carlo says no. <laughs> Impact Wrestling. Yeah, no more TNA, right? I'm probably always going to call it TNA. They're, I bet you they're, they're probably pissed about that. We're not TNA. Get the F out. Remember WWF? Took me a while to get the F out. Some people do still though, man. You know, there's times I, I, I tune into Impact and it's actually pretty fucking decent. It was just Josh Matthews made it unbearable. Now he's no longer on commentary. But just knowing that he got a step up, he, he got a promotion, makes me still not want to watch it. Um, there's a lot more no's than do that I am seeing. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot more no's, but there is a good amount of AMP unit members that, that does watch it, so... I don't know. Well, you're going to have your chance now on Thursdays. We'll see if that's any better than Tuesdays. They've been hitting uh, record lows as of late. So, and, and that's with the Kenny Omega and the whole relationship with AEW. That is not what they were expecting, I bet. I, I bet you they thought this was going to be huge. 
This is going to bring them a half a mil. AEW is going to cascade over a mil themselves. And their ratings just went, and I'll tell you why. It's what I said this whole fucking stream so far. Momentum. Tony Khan does a lot of things that are decent and even good. He has yet to consistently do great shit. He has yet to consistently captivate his audience. And more importantly, or just as important, Tony Khan has failed to consistently progress momentum. When something big happens the week before or a show before, the next week it falls flat. You remember that huge AEW a few months ago, Sting appeared, the relationship between AEW and Impact was revealed. There was a bunch more shit that happened as well on that one show. And we were, man, we, that was the talk of the fucking wrestling community. We were all like, damn, now it's exciting. And the very next week, within the first 15 minutes, fans were like, I'm done. Momentum failed. Last week, everybody talking about that main event. 10 minutes later, they're posting all this behind the scenes footage of Britt Baker hugging everybody and Thunder Rosa. And it's a love fest. And it's all about respect, but I thought they went to war, man. We want to be talking about the war and where everybody goes next. No, let's stomp on that fourth wall. Let's kill the fourth wall even more. It's already down. Let's post that it wasn't really a war. Let's watch all the marks talk about how good this match was. And then last night, Britt's right back into his character. Because it's just a TV show. Pro wrestling should be more than just even Stranger Things or Sopranos or Game of Thrones, or Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. It should be more than just a television show even. There's nothing like pro wrestling. I'm not saying you have to go to the extremes that the Four Horsemen did back in the day and Arn Anderson and Ric Flair literally not being seen anywhere with one another. And they were best friends, but when they were feuding, Arn and Ric tell stories how they were never seen together ever. I'm not saying you have to go necessarily to that point. But can you at least try, try to sell your own storyline on social or in the world? Do you have to make it faker than a lot of people already think pro wrestling is or more scripted or more predetermined, more pre-planned, more bullshit? I can't stand that shit, bro. So now you have, uh, was that off of, I don't know where that fucking, that was a side rant on top of a rant. Was that from a super? Who knows? <laughs> I forgot what got me onto that fucking rant, man. But you got wrestling every fucking day now. Monday, Raw, Tuesday. What's Tuesday? NXT, soon, a few weeks. NXT will be on Tuesdays. AEW will be on Wednesdays. Thursdays, Impact has officially moved to Thursdays, where they at least made the announcement. And then Fridays will be SmackDown. That's a lot of fucking wrestling. Christopher Blackshear, 399 Coffee. Thank you, brother. You said, just wondering, what's the beef with Matthew Matthews? Uh, he's just an annoying little fucking prick. He's a bitch ass. He's a, he's a, he's a tool. He's a fucking nerd to the 10th degree. Yeah, we, we just, you know, I, I shot some real fucking talk with him. You know, I try to help people out in the fucking community. Josh Matthews is just not a great fucking commentator. I tried to light a spark underneath his ass. Uh, he got wind of it and got upset with BC and he fucking threw a tantrum and then he fucking, when I was on social, uh, he fucking blocked me and fucking, I, I don't know, he was so when I was in, you guys know, I go to Florida a lot and I have some friends in these companies, or at least acquaintances, people that I know. So I went to say hello at the studio that Impact would film at and uh, saw Matthew was coming up. So I, I was going to... Not necessarily squash it. I was literally going to, let's just have some words, man. Amplified Man Matthews. And he went about it in such a bitch status. He fucking saw me and he started beelining the other. It was just total bitch boy status, man. I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into details because I'm not about dragging anybody right now. But Matthews, I have no problem dragging actually. But I'm not going to do that right now. It's not what this vid is about. Matthews is a fucking... Bitch boy Braden, internet bitch slap, IBS. But that's part of uh, today's society, I guess, right? He, he fits perfectly with today's up and coming fucking, but which is odd because I think he's in his fucking 30s, isn't he? Well, he fits in today's society, I'll tell you that much.
He acts, this guy walks around like he's fucking Michael Cole. And as much as we shit on Michael Cole, at least the dude knows his shit. At least he is good at what he fucking does, man. That dude does way more than you think he does. He ain't just a commentator. This dude is fucking a right-hand man for Vince and does a lot of work with a lot of people. And Josh Matthews thinks that just because he was under his wing for a year or so, that he's, he's in his league. He's like Jim Ross. He's, he's a modern-day Tony Schiavone. Matthews, you're a modern-day piece of shit. Anyway, was that a long-winded answer, uh, Christopher Blackshear? I appreciate the coffee, dude. I don't like him. How's that? I'm not one to mix words. I don't like him. If I don't like you, you're gonna know about it. I don't like you. I ain't gonna lose sleep over it. I don't like you. Now you only bet, you better hope BC don't smack the shit out of you. Which I won't. I just wanted some words with Matthews. Let's have some fucking words. There was a whole whole line there too. Hundred people. No, nobody was gonna get fucking smacked up their, upside their head, dude. We were gonna talk. Oh no, it's the amplified man. He's huge in person. I don't want any piece of him. <laughs> Mr. Charles Grin, five spot coffee. Do you believe Paul Heyman should be inducted next year into the Hall of Fame, knowing Eric B got inducted this year? That's fine. I have no problem with who gets inducted before who. It's a, sh it, it, it's, a, it's a realistic Hall of Fame that is at the same time a sham. I hope that makes sense. I love the Hall of Fame. It's a deserving thing, and it's a fun time for fans and talent. But it's, it's whoever Vince wants during that year. So I don't think any talent, or at least they shouldn't, take it that seriously. You know, like Undertaker, or Kane is going in before Undertaker. Well, that's because they want Undertaker when there's a crowd. Makes sense. So Eric Bischoff can go before Paul Heyman. That's fine. They can put in Harvey Whippleman. They can put in Mr. Fuji. Right? Is he already in? He might already be in. The point is you can put in fucking anyone else before Paul Heyman. And I'm sure Paul is going to be just fine with it. I am too. Vince, it's like he's just pulling names out of a fucking hat every year. That's the truth. Mr. Charles Green, I'm sure you know that. Thank you, brother. Ow. Kevin Langhoff, another five spot. Ray uses social so effectively, always in character. What do you think about how toxic and polarizing this Sasha and Bianca main event has gone? Kevin, exactly right. Uh, who was it before? Jacob Donnelly, I think, brought up MJF. Proved my point beautifully, Jacob did. He talked about MJF in, in AEW. MJF is the perfect example of somebody in AEW who plays their character even in interviews, plays their character online, and that helps the progression of not only the character, but the storyline and the company and where they want to go with anything. Over in WWE, you said it, Kevin. Bray Wyatt does that. Bray Wyatt is always in character, sending those cryptic tweets or whatever the fuck he's doing. I love that. Is it any wonder that I'm really high on MJF? I'm really high on Bray Wyatt? You guys see how consistent I am, don't you? I'm usually high on those that are doing everything correctly. And I like Britt Baker. And she's this close from doing everything correctly. Britt has to stop caring about what others think about her match when she's performing the fucking match. What do you mean, BC? I mean, when you're doing that shit, when you're planning it, when you're doing it, it shouldn't be, oh, if we do this, Meltzer will give us an extra star. Not even BC. If I do this, BC said he liked it two weeks ago. I'm going to do it for BC. No. Worry about that shit to yourself a week later. You do what is in your fucking heart, your gut, your dome piece. What you think is going to be the best. Anyway, yeah, the Sasha Bianca main event thing, man, it was trending. People thought it was going to be Lashley and McIntyre main eventing. Now this trend is picking up steam. Sasha and Bianca might be. I'm okay with Sasha Bianca main eventing. Couple goals, who's a uh, amplified tried and true. He gave me the idea of like an Iron Woman match. I'm sure he was thinking 60 minutes. Even if they gave him 30 minutes, I would like 60 or at least 45. But you give them an Iron Woman match, that could be pretty badass because you know Sasha and Bianca can tear it down. But there's no wrong way here. Lashley and McIntyre could tear it down, and so could Bianca and Sasha. So I hope no matter which it is, people aren't going to go on social and try to fucking cancel the actual main event, and then it gets changed. It's not fair to any one of these four individuals. Kevin, thank you, dude. Chelsea, another two spot. If anything, they should induct BC into the Hall of Fame. 
I'll be the, the, in the YouTuber Hall of Fame, the podcast Hall of Fame. That's where I'll be, Chelsea. Thank you. That's funny. Man, if I missed anybody, you guys came balling on a Thursday. I was not expecting this, to be honest. I, I was only supposed to do a half an hour. I said an hour tops. I'm already going to be late for what I have planned at 9 o'clock tonight because it does take a little bit of travel, but whatever the fuck. I don't care, man. It's more fun talking to you guys. But if I did miss any supers, guys, just know they, they went fast. There was a lot of them. I'll get you in the next stream or video. Much love, guys. Um, there was something else I wanted to talk about, though, before we end this. Uh, stream and that was uh, that was the Hall of Fame itself that you guys brought up earlier with Kane and uh, Eric Bischoff. Also, I heard that the Great Kali is being inducted. The Great Kali. What do you guys feel about that? Before we take, uh, can, can I take another? Carlos, I see you, man, with that five spot. Great show, BC. Thanks, Carlos. I, I, I sound like a broken record. Thank you for tuning in, man. Uh, be, I, I love seeing my tried and trues up in this bitch. Thank you, Carlos. Salud. Do you guys think... Uh, do you want my take on Kali, guys? If you're not from, like, a, a America or, like, a, if, if you don't pull yourself out of your own country, like, just America, for instance. I'll use this as an example. You're probably thinking, oh, Kali, really? That's how low the standards are for Hall of Fame? But you do have to think, guys, about what he does for other portions of the crowd. Like, what he did for India, for instance. It, India is, is such a huge market. So you have to think, like, what this dude personified for his country and for so many people, it's actually big. Just because he didn't do a lot for America or things of that nature you still have to kind of include a lot of other things. I hope that makes sense. I mean, you're free to think about it however way you want. I'm kind of mixed. On one hand, I totally see how much he did for other people, his own country, for instance. On the other hand, overall for the company, he wasn't that much of a success. So I feel like everybody, if you've been there for a little bit of, little bit of time, everybody just gets to go in. Hope I'm not contradicting myself. It's just that's, I'm kind of 50-50 on that. And I hate 50-50 booking shit. <laughs> but I'm a little 50-50. I see you guys up in here kind of 50-50 too, man. Yeah, I saw Mr. Charles Grin said RVD is also in the Hall of Fame. But that's not really a new story because he's clearly deserving. I, mean, I think 90% plus would say RVD deserves to be there. Kali rose up um, some debate this week about it. And that's why I wanted to run it by you guys. Carlos said he's big over in India. Yeah, and that's what I, I saw a lot of fans from India saying, wait, you you don't think he was a big deal, but you you don't live here. And I'm telling you right now, Kali was huge. So, you know, don't they deserve to see Kali? I don't know, man. It, it's same thing as Jinder Mahal. You know, he's a former champion, world champion, whether you like Jinder or not. He was in main events. He's been in the company for years. When Jinder's time comes to go in the Hall of Fame, that's going to be a debate. People are going to like, Jinder, really? And then there's going to be people like BC that says, yeah, I can see it. For many reasons. War Dog, Five Spot, Beautiful Live, BC. Claymore, by Amplify. Claymore Party. You get a Claymore. They get a Claymore. Everybody gets a Claymore. Bobby, you're going to get a Claymore. Welcome to the Claymore Party. <laughs> Thank you, War Dog. Appreciate it. Jamal, Jamal with a five spot says amp unit should hold WWE hostage until Vince does better. The whole amp unit would have to storm Stanford, Connecticut. Thank you, Jamal. This dude is going to learn his lesson from his shareholders at some point because he's sucking every penny every which way he can. He sold his last big deal to Peacock. What is left? He's selling off his assets now. The only thing left is to sell out his actual ass. <laughs> Jamal, thanks, brother. Kevin Hefner, 199, VKM wants as many world champions in as possible. Yeah, absolutely, because it's, it, it sounds better to him and it makes it more prestigious. But you look at some of these champions and you're kind of scratching your dumb piece on them. But yeah, Kevin, absolutely. Christopher Blackshear, 499, Kali was made into a joke like the other big men. Went from a monster to doing kiss cam and tooth fairy costumes. You remember that shit, Christopher? But you're exactly right, Christopher Blackshear. You have uh, Kali being just like no or no better than the Big Show, Kane, um, 
almost is going to be in that fucking category soon. I'm telling you right now. So, you know, Braun Strowman. I mean, you look at all the big dudes. And Vince just took them. They could have been something. And he found ways, many ways, to destroy them almost on the spot. Thank you, Christopher. Chelsea with another two spot. We're back. Hashtag, I'm a Claymore. VKM included. With a Claymore. You know it, Chelsea. Much love. So yeah, that's it, man. Uh, anybody that's just tuning in now and didn't see the uh, the top of the fucking uh, program, we we I'm telling you right now the flaws in in AEW, NXT, obviously WWE as well. If people choose to listen to BC uh, and, and start talking about the real issues, then pro wrestling can start to become better again. And those gaps, those holes can be filled. If people want to take what BC is saying and turn a blind eye to it and go, no, they're fine. Those aren't the problems then pro wrestling will never get better. Cody asked us to give him the problems. These are the fucking problems. Stop breaking down the fourth wall. Get the fuck off social media if you are a performer or at least use social media in character. Carry momentum when you have a good show. Make sure the next week it's great. Don't just rest on that show and even get worse. You look at this show last night for AEW, it was tragically worse than last week. Look at the main events alone. They didn't carry any momentum. These are real problems. NXT, they're all over the fucking place. They're trying to counter fucking program with AEW by having a different pay-per-view type of Wednesday night. Twice a fucking month, it seems like NXT is holding a, a special event Wednesday episode of their NXT show on USA. They're counter-programming. It looks desperate at times. They have talent, but they're putting out all these matches that could easily be on a takeover. They're trying to put them right on the show. No real or not enough time to really advertise it or get people invested into the storyline. So it's a double-edged sword. You're killing what could have been a great storyline and you're killing the match that could have been at a takeover. And now you have a two-night takeover event and each night only has three matches apiece. So it doesn't need two nights. Just like WrestleMania, they made them two nights. For what? Both nights only have four matches apiece. NXT TakeOver this year only needs to be one night. WrestleMania only needs to be one night. Two nights, and they can't even fill the cards. NXT is even worse off than AEW. Don't believe me? Look at the fucking ratings week to week, because I look at the numbers. Up and down, yin-yang, yo-yo type booking bullshit. NXT is near 700,000, then they're at 500,000, then they're at 650, then they're at 475. AEW cannot get to that million. AEW is consistently fucking around three quarters of a million. 757. They went down 11,000 from last week's main event. That's unacceptable. Because people went online to talk about the story and instead they got Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa hugging each other. And enough with the six-man tags. Tony Khan, listen to BC for a second here. Tony, Cody, listen. Enough with the six-man tags. We don't need two of them every show. We don't need a trios championship. It is a circus. It's a clown show. It's a sideshow. Everybody is like a ping-pong ball. Everybody is setting up the next spot. Nobody is fucking selling. The right way, anyway. Jake Roberts is in that company. I don't see how he watches this shit backstage or in the crowd and doesn't roll his fucking eyes back to the rear of his dome piece. I don't understand. Jake Roberts, one of the best of selling of all time. Stone Cold brought that point up. Was it to Randy Orton recently? But Stone Cold brought it up about selling. I think it was Paul Heyman, actually. Stone Cold and Paul Heyman's Broken Skull session. And Stone Cold said, Paul, what's up with the selling? Jake Roberts, one of the best of all times. Nowadays, everybody's setting up to be, do a gymnastics fest. And after they're done doing all their gymnastics, they pop up and they set the next move set up. Last night, two of them. And what the fuck are you doing with Miro? Why is this dude playing games again? Like literally playing video games? He's in an arcade match. This is supposed to be better than Vince McMahon's booking? Fuck out of here. They ruined Miro from the day he got to AEW. And last week, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa, captivating the wrestling world. We all shit on AEW's women's division this whole year. They finally have a breakout moment. And how do they capitalize this, this week? Nyla Rose and Conti. And then some weird circus shit afterwards. Stop, man. You, you literally... You regressed. You went backwards from last week. In your main event, 
Dark Order and Al Darby Allen. Brah. But but there's no problems. We're supposed to say AEW is amazing. And NXT just needs to be on a new night. Are you so sure that when, he, when NXT goes to Tuesday, are you so sure that NXT is going to be pulling in a million? Because I'm not. I'm saying right now, I don't think the product is good enough. Are you saying that AEW is definitely going to pull in 1.3, which is NXT's audience, once they're on Tuesday? Because I'm not so sure. I'm all about addressing the issues to make wrestling better. If people can handle that, welcome to the Amplified Unit. Glad to have you. If you can't handle it, hit the bricks. There's a lot of people that are sucking that AEW dick. Go, go suck along with them. There's a lot of people sucking the NXT dick and the fucking WWE shit. Ride that shit till the fucking cows come home. This isn't the channel. I want to see every promotion succeed. I want to see every promotion progress for the better. To do that, we have to call out the good with the bad and the ugly. It's the only way the companies can get better. That is true feedback. This is what Cody asked us to do. If you are a true AEW fan or a true NXT fan, I am asking you, please be real with yourself and them. That way we can get better programming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for the 200. I just saw that, man. 200 on the ups. Uh, badass, man. You guys are the absolute best. Um, Trouble is the bear, five spot coffee. I miss traditional ladder matches. You have any thoughts on why maybe they're not doing that anymore? By the way, much love. Right back to you, Trouble is the bear. Uh, I, I'm sure they're outplayed, and that's probably why. They, I used to love traditional ladder matches too, Jubbless the Bear, but you know damn well, just like I do, they have ruined it because it, for a while, every other week was a ladder match. And then we started to see steel cages every other week. Uh, Money in the Bank got its own fucking pay-per-view. Elimination Chamber has its own fucking pay-per-view. No DQ matches, no holds barred matches. They started coming up every other week. They ran these matches into the ground. To be honest, Chubbless, I, I miss old school ladder matches, but these days they no longer do anything for me. So that's my thoughts on it. Thank you, brother. Wow. All right, that's my ranting. That was a fucking hour and a half plus of me just fucking... I'm, I'm, these are more problems. They have to get fixed. I, I can't wait for the day where AEW and NXT are pulling in fucking... just badass ratings, man. But when I tune into these fucking shows and I feel like they're not special and I feel like they're not captivating, I already know what the rating is going to be. And then I tune in the next day to the rating and sure enough, I'm right. I am always right when it comes to the numbers because I know what I'm watching and I know what viewers want at the core. I know what pro wrestling was based upon and founded upon. And these companies are failing left and right miserably at the most basic of shit. I can't wait till all these companies are doing millions, brah. I'm sick and tired of tuning into these numbers and seeing 750, 700. You know, and nobody wants to change. It's the same program the next week. And then the next week, the same program. And then the next week, the same program. Or when they do something awesome like the main event last week for AEW and Tony Khan does something good. The next week, it's back to fucking mundanity. And then fans lie to themselves. Oh, but I loved it. It was amazing. Did you guys say AEW? Amazing. And then you go over it and you're like, wow, I watched it and it wasn't amazing, actually. There was actually nothing amazing on the show. Nothing amazing. Nothing even great. Barely good. Kevin Heffernor, 199. I miss no pins and submission cage matches. Yeah, remember that shit? You had to go over the top, man. That's when they, hey, Kevin, that's when they had the, uh, remember the old school blue one? It was a blue cage and it had the big fucking square holes, basically. Now it's like a cage. I'm with you, Kevin. All right, guys, that's it, man. If I missed any supers, I'll get you in the next uh, uh, next vid, next stream, whatever it is. Um, but you guys came balling today. I, I was not expecting that on a Thursday evening. So. Make sure I got everybody up in there, though. I think I got everybody, though. But just in case, I'll get you in the next one. Thank you, guys, for the over 200 on the ups. Uh, several hundred watching live throughout this motherfucker. Thousands will be tuning in later tonight. So thank you for showing them that we rocked it during this stream. Pretty badass. And uh, I'll catch you guys 
maybe there'll be an impromptu tomorrow. We'll see. Definitely, obviously, SmackDown later in the week. Um, and then we're, we're on the fast lane to WrestleMania. So a lot more content, obviously, next week and beyond. So thank you guys for tuning in, man. Salud. Carlos, thank you, brother. No, hold on. I got it. I got, yeah, I got that. Chelsea, check you. Santivia Major, check you. Jer9 Gaming, Wardall, check you. Mr. Charles Grin, Lucas Allen, thank you for the kind words. Blueprint Nation, Carlos, I'll get you fucking 75 more times in the stream. <laughs> uh, Jennifer Pierce up in this bitch. What up, Jennifer? Sean, 1986, much love from the UK. Right back at you in the UK. Um, Rachel, Rachel, thank you for helping getting those likes up too, Rachel. Little business partner up in this bitch. Rachel, thank you for the coffees as well. Youngblood085, check you. Youngblood. Mr. Charles Grin, I got you, got you again. Laura, Laura, what's up? Good to see you up in here, Laura. Batty Banks, Chubbless the Bear. Jacqueline Robinson, Darren Vicks, BC rocks, you rock, Darren. Gaming Francis, Iron Riaz, Goblety Gooker, Chris Maycock, Eddie, damn, Kev L, hot damn. Enraged. I like that. N dot rage. That's, that's badass. Enraged. Later. We'll check you. <laughs> Venom 74 79 says, damn it, I always get here toward the end. <laughs> hey, in time for a little shout out, Venom. And I'll have this up uh, later on. So don't worry, Venom. Thanks for tuning in, showing the love. Keith Wallace, we'll check you. Prince Maverick, we'll check you. All right, guys, I can't get to everybody. Thank you. We're going to 225 on the ups. Thank you for the coffees. You didn't need to, but that's badass. That'll keep me amped for many vids to come, obviously. And uh, I hope you guys honestly take the words that I that I ranted today and really take them to heart, man. And, and together, man, if we speak up and are truthful with those wrestlers, with the people heading the, helming the fucking ship, captaining the ship, we can help change this shit. All right? I'm not just saying all this shit just to be entertaining just so you guys are entertained for a couple of hours. I mean this shit, all right? So I hope you guys are really taking a lot of, uh, from it. All right, that's it. Mr. Anything for Salinas. Thank you for the coffees, man. Jer9 Gaming, I got you as well. Carlos, you know it. Uh, all right, and, and everybody else too. Brandon McCree, I saw you. Uh, man, there's too, so many. It's going really fast. All right, we'll be here another half an hour. Much love, guys. And we'll do this again, maybe even tomorrow. Keep, keep uh, subscribed and keep checking the channel. I could have an impromptu tomorrow. All right? Jackie Leader. Let's do another swig for my unit. All aboard the Amplified Express. Move over, Strowman. Choo choo, chaka chaka. Fuck you. <laughs> uh oh, it's kicking in. Check you.